A very tough loss tonight for the Lafayette women. 39-37. You see the frustration written all over. Diane Nolan and our Coca-Cola player of the game, Maddie Peabody. Here's Diane. Here's Dan. Here's Maddie. All right. Thanks a lot, Gary. Appreciate it. Third-year head coach Diane Nolan. Uh, one of the toughest things about being a coach is when your team is in a funk, trying to get them out of it. You worked your tail off over there on the sidelines during every timeout, and there's only so much you can do from the sideline other than getting on the court and causing commotion. No, I mean, they were. We were in a funk. We had to shake off Saturday, and I thought we did as the game wore on. You know, I thought we, we were coming out of it, and, you know, we just uh, missed a couple buckets, and uh, we made those buckets as a different game. You know, so we had some easy looks, and we just didn't, they just didn't go down. You know, I don't know why. I thought we got some defensive stops. I thought we got some rebounds, but we just got to make some buckets. You have some good depth at the point guard position. It's been a battle all season long. Maddie Peabody has really seemed to elevate her game in the last few here and uh, had your only field goals here in the second half. Also kind of put the team on her back in a drive to the basket towards the end. Yes, yeah, she did. I mean, she really has elevated her game and we're excited because we needed somebody to do that and, and she's someone that we can certainly uh, look to and she can be our floor general. All right, well, good luck with the final regular season contest in the Patriot League game. You'll be visiting American on Saturday. Best of luck there, Diane. Thank you. All right, Coach Diane Nolan third year head coach here at Lafayette College for the women's program and our our Coca-Cola player of the game Maddie Peabody sophomore guard Maddie I'll tell you what we we're just talking uh, your coach and I about your game really kind of being elevated here at this time of the season uh, leading rebounder against Lehigh a game ago and here scoring the only field goals for Lafayette in the second half tell us a little bit about your personal effort um, I just think that uh, we're, we're getting Bria back from her injury from earlier in the year so I knew that we needed to balance the scoring out with that and defensively we've struggled in the past so just trying to keep the defense elevated and try to be a leader on the floor and I think that's helped us but just doing what I can. Well you're doing a great job of it and I'll tell you what I think being a soccer goalie really helps. I've seen some great athleticism out of you here on the floor. Three field goals tonight one of them a three pointer seven rebounds <laughs> again keeping that charge alive three assists and seven points. Matty Peabody congratulations on being our Coca-Cola player of the game. Thank you. All right and there you have it Gary and John now back to you guys. All right Dan thank Thank you very much, and congratulations to Maddie, the only one to get field goals in the second half. Lafayette was 13 for 16 from the free throw line, but certainly struggled shooting the basketball. John has the highlights. Here's Mr. Leon. Well, Gary really on the story of the game and throughout the game was Lafayette's defense on the interior. They came away with 12 blocks tonight, so really it was very tough going for both teams, but especially for Colgate around Lafayette's goal. Then Emily Holman got it started. Six half, the six first half points, none prettier than that a jab step and drive from the foul line. She takes her game inside the block. Nice little turn there. And then a uh, little catch and shoot by uh, Maddie Fayan from the baseline. Lafayette seemed to be clicking. Here's a three from Jamie O'Hare. That was her only three of the game, but points were few and far between. So when Lafayette did get them, they were important. Great here in the second half. It looked like Lafayette was going to go on a run. Maddie Peabody again in transition on the layup. Little dribble drive by Bria Freeland. She dumps it off to Maddie Peabody. And there was a three. And at that point, Lafayette was in business. But this young lady, the senior, leading scorer, Jasmine Lynch, she has been a stalwart throughout her career at Colgate. She's kind of the go-to player if they have one. Down the stretch, great dribble drive by Manning. Dumps it off to Fiaco. She can't finish. Holman gets another point-blank look at it. Can't finish. And that pretty much sums up what kind of night it was for the Leopards Gary they had point blank opportunities and just couldn't finish it does indeed John here's how the numbers shook out for uh First of all, for Colgate, they had 14 field goals. They had four threes, seven for 11 from the foul line for their 39 points as you get a look at the individual numbers. And Jasmine Lynch with 11, their leading scorer, as she has been almost the entire season. And uh, leading them in rebounds was uh, Lulu Braze with seven. On the Lafayette side, you get a look at their numbers as uh, Danielle Fiaco with 11 points and seven rebounds. Peabody, 7.7 7 rebounds, but notably the only one to score a field goal in the second half. She had a triple and she had a deuce and it took Lafayette almost uh, seven full minutes in order to score a field goal in that half. They were 13 for 16 from the foul line uh, as we had mentioned earlier. So Lafayette falls to 11 and 17 4 and 9 in the league. Uh, we did hear Bucknell lost so they stay at 4 and 9. Colgate now at 3 and 10. Uh, so not much really has changed in terms of the standings. If things stay the way they are Right now, Lafayette would face Army at Army uh, next Thursday. For Colgate, as we mentioned,
mentioned, they go to 3-10, and 10, but they're 9-19 and 19 now overall, and they've won three of their last five games, so they're putting together a nice streak after losing 10 games in a row. A reminder, we'll be back here at noon on Saturday, the final regular season game when the Lafayette men take on America. And we thank Diane Nolan and wish her ball club well. We will not see them again uh, this season as they will not be home in the uh, first round of the tournament, and then the rest of the games are turned over to CBS Sports Network. My thanks to John Leone and Dan Mowdy, and of course Rick Gio and the RCN television team. To all of you for spending time with us tonight. We'll see you Saturday at noon for Lafayette American. For all of us, I'm Gary Lava. Good night, everybody.